Hello and welcome back to the Old Realms, and we're gonna actually attack this guy. Yeah, they decided to declare war against us. I was actually planning on attacking a different faction after I reached Clan Tier 5, which we we have. We have actually reached Clan Tier 5. I know I said it would take quite some time. However, what's really funny about that is whenever I say that, for some reason, not sure if this is a mind trick or some other kind of subconscious thing, but whenever I think to myself, hmm, yeah, that's going to take a long time, I then all of a sudden do it in no time at all. It literally took me about, what, 15 minutes, I think, maybe 10, I don't actually know, but it seemed to go very very quickly and I thought to myself wow okay that's actually a lot faster than anticipated and that's just amazing that's great I love that um, but basically I just attacked as many bandits as I could get my hands on and that's exactly what you should do really you know you should just try and attack as many people as possible anyway I'm just gonna place cannon here cannon here and that's pretty much it. That's literally all I'm gonna do just gonna move my forces ahead here um, unfortunately my own <laughs> My own allies. Oh, pfft. okay. They're getting exploded. They are getting exploded like no one's business. Oh, no, you cannot hit me with that lance. Thank you very much. Get out of here. All right. Yeah. So I am um, hopefully going to see. Yes. There we go. Our, our cannons are actually starting to do something here. Hopefully I'm not going to get myself any kind of crash or something like that. That would not be too nice. So what we're going to do is we're just going to assault the enemies. Um, enemies artillery people as best we can just gonna try and shoot this guy and I actually have this new sword now because uh, I said to you that I actually purchased a sword a while ago and I was using a warrior priest hammer instead because I thought hey you know what this is actually really cool oh you know what I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna leave that in all right usually okay so here's a funny thing Usually people, I'm not talking about me specifically, but usually people, if they make a mistake like this, they're just going to cut it out, you know? They're just going to cut it out of the video and then be like, yeah, I didn't make any mistakes whatsoever. That was a completely flawless battle. No, but me, I'm not going to do that. You know why? Because that was hilarious. That was absolutely rip-roariously funny. Um, <laughs> I was just about to say literally that my goal with using the hammer was to do more damage against structures and things like that and well I was somewhat able to do that but yeah for the most part we had some big big issues and well you could see here exactly what's happening well can you see what's happening I'm not entirely sure what you can even see what's happening because there's just so many different units running around all over the place here but we should theoretically be fine, but it very much depends. I mean, it seems like we're actually losing by a pretty significant margin. Hmm, that's quite surprising actually, because I think we have the numbers. Yeah, I think we have the numbers. Anyway, yeah, as I was about to say, the mace does do more damage slightly to um, structures and things like that. So for example, gates and, uh, you know, in this case, cannons. And I was actually attempting to eliminate it uh, you know, it actually just goes to show that what I should do is just just leave it, you know? Just leave it, just leave the cannon alive, because as you saw, it basically just killed me anyway, so I might as well have just left it alone and just gotten myself some very, very nice gunpowder specialization, just get myself some proficiency and some skills, and that's it. Just concentrate on leveling myself up and just leaving leaving my people to do whatever they want to do, and, and that's it, you know. Uh, oh well, never mind. I've taken someone's advice in the comments. Uh, you basically told me that, you know, um, you've tested it out and any level of engineer is perfectly fine. And they will actually take control of the cannons and they will take control of, uh, well, mortars and, and so on and so forth. And I've taken your advice, as I say. And we now have some master engineers, as you can see right there. And we also have some veteran artillery crew. And I'm also taking some other, other veteran artillery crew right there, and hopefully we'll be able to convert those over time. Now, obviously, as I said to you beforehand, we did advance to clan tier 5. 
and that is amazing. That has really made a huge difference, as you can quite clearly tell, because we also have Noble Retinues now uh, working for us. As you can see, the party size of our Tier 5 Plus clans are, uh, it, well, is actually increased by 40, which is amazing. That is so incredibly good. Because on top of the fact that we are actually the next clan tier, wait a minute, how do I actually see how much I've gained? Yeah, there you go. Additional party size for every party in the clan? What? Wait a minute. For every party in the clan? Does that actually... Wait a minute. If I create a new party here, does that actually make any difference? Hmm. That is something maybe that I need to test out. So why don't I just go ahead and get... Oh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, an engineer. Okay, fine, fine, fine. We'll we'll get an engineer and we'll see what he's all about. Maybe we can, I don't know, equip him with some amazing things. I mean, he's just awful. No offense. He has very, very bad stats, but let's just, okay, let's, let's just give him a chance, okay? Let's just give him a chance. And we're just going to go in here and we're just going to try and equip him with some stuff. He literally costs us 10,000. And he gives us basically nothing in return in that regard. I mean, literally, he has nothing at all in regards to his own equipment. So he comes equipped with nothing. Look at his skills. His skills are... Oh, my God. What, the, what is even... What is, what is this even? Anyway. Yeah, he's got bow skill. All right. So <laughs> let's give him a masterwork Nordic short bow. Give him a shield. Um, he needs arrows, doesn't he? Yeah, give him some of these. And he needs a weapon, so let's give him a relatively decent weapon. There we go. And then we need to give him some armor as well. I've actually sold a lot of my armor over the course of the last um, little bit of time in game. So I am not really going to have a huge amount of really good stuff for him, which is unfortunate. But there isn't much to do about that. There isn't much to do about that. Anyway, uh, what is his writing skill like? Uh, 65. Hmm. We could give him something. Yeah, why not? Let's just give him something. Let's give him some of that. There we go. And now we can make him into a party. Now, obviously, this is not really um, this is not really designed for anything but increasing my own party size. I just want to test this out because I haven't actually seen the wording on that before. And I'm kind of intrigued to see whether it actually does make a difference. Or it could just be something, I don't know, random or whatever. Did that actually increase? Did that actually increase or did I have 235 before? thought I had 235 before. I think I did. Okay, so that hasn't actually increased anything then. Okay, so that's good to know. So yeah, it is exactly as I thought and it does not make any difference. Okay. Right. Well, whatever the case, I think the best thing for me to do now is for me to attack these guys. Um, I, I would actually like to attack them. We can easily catch them, but I am at 48% HP. I'm not entirely sure. Should I go in? Because I have a lot of people that are injured at the moment, and I'm kind of not wanting to put them in a situation where we're going to have some issues. So I don't know whether I should do that. Hmm. We could do that, or we could uh, level up our leadership. Mm, I'm thinking at the moment maybe it would be an idea or a better idea to level up my athletic skill because as I said to you beforehand, I personally feel like leveling up athletic skill would make a huge difference to our overall movement speed and that would make a huge difference in regards to pretty much everything, our survivability as well in sieges for example. Because uh, then, then we're going to be able to run away from pretty much anything so that's going to be great. Anyway, uh, let's see what we can do here. So we're going to go in against him. And let's see what he's all about. I'm actually just going to heal myself straight away so that I don't have any issues. And uh, let's have a look. Okay, let's place my cannon here. Place my cannon here. We'll just let these guys do their thing. Going to move these guys over here. Put them into a loose formation. And then I have no idea what to do. I guess I'm just going to do this. Just going to tell the horse archers to charge in. Because they're the ones that are going to be kind of just chilling. You know, they're going to just do a lot of damage over time. And they're going to obviously, hopefully, prevent themselves from getting killed too. I shouldn't actually shoot the ones on horseback. I'm going to get a crash again from that. Let's not do that. But as long as I don't get killed by my own cannons, we should be absolutely fine. It feels to me like the enemy doesn't actually have any cannons right now. So I think we should be completely fine there too. Not entirely sure why I'm missing every single shot at the moment. 
Oh yeah, please let me run into that. Yes, yes, please let me run into a thing that gets me killed. That sounds great. That sounds like a wonderful idea, doesn't it? Hello there, sir. Goodbye. Yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like the blunderbuss was actually quite fun because it does do so much damage to a wide variety of targets, but the problem with it is its slow reload speed. I feel like if the reload speed was just that little bit, just that little bit faster, or they, as I said to you before, if they gave you, I don't know, two shots for every one reload, I think that would be cool, but obviously that's not realistic because blunderbuss were not like that. So, you know, that's, um, yeah, it's kind of neither here nor there. But, I mean, this is this is technically Warhammer Fantasy, so I don't know. I mean, I am using a repeater rifle at the moment, so that kind of makes sense, right? For it to be, I don't know. I mean, obviously, if it's not present in the actual subject material, then <laughs> there's not much to do about it, you know? Because otherwise, you're just going to be like, oh, yes, I just added this random thing that actually isn't in the source material, and people are going to complain because it's like oh yes this thing is not in there and not accurate and so on anyway i'm just going to bring out my two-handed sword because this is actually a fantastic weapon as you can quite clearly tell does massive damage and it's really really easy to use on horseback as well as you can see look at that i literally don't even need to try with this two-handed i can literally just go straight up to someone and just randomly swipe at them and it and they just die not because of the amount of damage it does, because obviously it does do a lot of damage, but it's also because of the fact that it just has such a long reach and its ease of use is so incredibly simple. Anyway, there we go. Gain another 23 Renown. Obviously, here's the thing. I don't think I'm going to be able to make it to Renown Tier 6 anytime soon. I'm going to be taking these guys prisoner as well. Um, because it's just going to take me a long, long time. So we're going to have to make do with what we currently have, which is 235 party capacity. Going to assume, hopefully later down the line, we might be able to make it. I mean, you can see here, we need... <laughs> oh my, wow. I, I, You know, I, I got to say, I'm not entirely sure. You've got to spend so much time to get to Clan Tier 6. It's absolutely insane. I'm not even entirely sure how much more party capacity it would give us, but obviously with 6,000 renown, I mean, really, if you, if you just think about that, that is three times the amount that you're going to need to get to clan tier 5. It's not even double, it's literally triple the amount. That is, ah, oh, wow, I, I feel like that's a bit much, to be honest. I don't know, is it just is it just me? I don't know. Anyway, we're going to go for Annoying Buzz right here, as I said to you before. This is super, super good. Plus 20% battle morale penalty to enemies with mounted ranged kills. And because, you know, because I'm getting so many ranged kills, that just makes all the sense. So that's going to be fantastic. Let's see if I can actually create an army here. I don't think I'm going to be able to call for pretty much anyone. No, I can call for one person. I will be attempting to take this and um, maybe we can expand our territory a little bit. As I said, I did actually want to fight a different faction. I wanted to fight the vampires because for me personally, I think they would be extremely interesting to fight. Not because of me being particularly looking forward to their fight because as I said to you in a previous episode, they are going to be very, very difficult for us in my opinion. I feel like they're actually going to be maybe the most difficult for us to kill in the entire game uh, in the entire mod because they have AoE spells that are insanely strong and because we have well primarily a ranged very static force of troops and these troops are literally going to be just standing there they're going to be waiting for the oh he's just Okay. He he literally just decided to charge in. All right. Well, that's fine, I guess. I, I guess we're just going to have to make do with the ladders then. I was actually going to bombard the walls a little bit um, because I thought to myself, oh, yeah, it'd probably be a good idea to bombard the walls, make sure that we don't get absolutely massacred. But he obviously assumes that we have some pretty decent numbers, and that is going to provide us with 
victory question mark i guess i guess that's what he's planning on doing okay well uh let's try it out then i'm gonna be placing a mortar around about here behind these lines here gonna place another one nearby as well whoa yeah we're getting some damage from elspeth i don't know how she did that she must be on a on the trebuchet potentially maybe something like that can i actually reload this thing while i'm doing this i don't think so right Okay, now that's all that's left is not to get shot in the face. There we go. No, no, I do need to reload. Okay, let me see. Okay, take out that guy. Take out this one if we can. There we go. Yeah, yeah, we should be... I feel like... I, I don't know. I feel like we can clear these guys out pretty quickly. But it very much depends on who's in front of me right now because if we have a bunch of friendly troops that are blocking my shots that's not really going to be too conducive to that okay let me see if i can maybe do this Yeah, as I anticipated, it does seem to be taking quite some time for our forces to actually get inside the keep. Because, well, there's only two ways to get up here. And that is, of course, to use the ladders. So it's going to take quite some time for them to actually, you know, get onto the battlements. But we do have uh, we do have a pretty, pretty decent number of people in here already. But, you know, it would have been a lot easier if they'd actually just, you know, gotten some, I don't know, siege towers or... Um, battering ram or something like that and then just have us destroy the catapults and things like that but obviously as I said he does think that we have a significant amount of troops and that I suppose was enough for him so I guess that's fine if he thinks that we can do it then I will put my confidence behind him and hopefully that's going to be uh, enough to win us the day and obviously we've got this really really fantastic two-handed sword and it's much more in keeping with our own class at the moment because obviously we're kind of like a i don't know empire vassal now more than anything else and kind of it's, it's pretty cool in my opinion that's pretty cool anyway unfortunately i can't use my petty heal right now i would have loved to have used the petty heal right at the end there but um, the battle ended just as i was about to use it and you can't actually cast spells after the battle has been called a victory so there you go anyway we did increase our relation gain for some reason with that one fellow i have no idea how that even happened but okay anyway we can now move on and i'm not entirely sure if we're going to take all the loot or whether we're going to just donate that for experience mm, 13,600. i think that's pretty good might as well do that don't even need cash right now and we can uh, let's see let's see let's see okay hand gunners hand gunners don't want any of those grenade launcher guys just in case and there we go so we've taken the castle i'm actually kind of a bit weirded out that the castle took us so long to take i'd kind of like to see if we could maybe take something a little bit more difficult all right so here we go we got the walls down at this town this is all the way over in a relatively distant portion of tala Beckland, and we are hopefully going to be able to take this i'm a little bit worried about it to be honest even though we have taken down the walls it does have double yes double the amount of defenders than we have attackers so this is going to be extremely important for us to try to maximize our kill potential so what i'm going to do 
is I'm going to place two mortars round about here. This is pretty close to the overall area um, for the opponent. But what I'm actually hoping to do is just maximize our kills. Just maximize our kills as best as I can. And hopefully if I can, I'd also like to gain a massive amount of personal kills myself. Because we can something uh, maybe do something like this, as you can see, massive, massive damage from that. And oh wow, yeah, this just reminds me of playing a spellcaster and being like, oh look at that, there's a huge, huge amount of troops, and then I can just curse them all or use I don't know, wind of death or something, and it just makes me uh, makes me really want to use that. But yeah, I think we need some AOE. You know, we need some AOE equipment of some kind. Hopefully my uh, my mortars will do a decent enough job. I'm not entirely sure where they're even aiming at the moment. They seem to be aiming off into that direction, which I suppose is fine, as long as they're aiming somewhere and doing something. Then that's all that I really I can really ask for, right? Yeah, can't really ask them to do much more than that. Anyway, let's see if I can do some damage to these guys. Nice, nice, nice. And we need to do some damage here too. It seems like my uh, my focusing on the enemy in the back here has really made a huge difference. Probably because of Annoying Buzz, right? I don't know. I feel like Annoying Buzz is definitely making a difference, potentially, to their actions. Because they are moving around relatively erratically right now. I'm not entirely sure if they're really defending as the best they could. Because maybe they're actually... I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just killing a bunch. I don't know. Maybe, maybe there's just a combination of the two things. I, I'm not entirely sure. But... As you can see, there's so many enemies here. I would love to be able to continue to deal damage. Maybe if we can do that. This is where I'd love to have a blunderbuss as well. But as we've seen, the blunderbuss is uh, not that fun to play with. I mean, I think it's fun. Don't get me wrong. I think it's really, really fun if you can actually get a massive amount of troops in one area. Like this, for example. But for a single target, it just is not so useful because while it is able to kill basically anything from close range, like it does so much damage, literally so much damage, um, but it's just so unusable apart from that. For a single target, it just is um, inferior to what I'm currently using. So there's that, which is somewhat unfortunate how many kills have i actually gotten so far 157 that's actually not entirely bad for the amount of well single target and the amount of aoe potential i currently have because obviously i can't penetrate shields just yet that is a thing that i will be able to do in the future once i have piercing shots i'm not entirely sure what my gunpowder skill is currently at so obviously that's a uh, you know, a pretty big deal there. But we've killed 640 of the opponent. So we should basically be achieving victory sometime soon. Hopefully we will be. Let's just take these guys down. There we go. Take as many of them down as we can get our hands on, of course. And hopefully, apart from that, we should be fine to finish this up.
and there we have it 128 renown for us 93 percent of the loot because apparently we did all the damage i killed 188 in total not sure if that's any good to be honest but I'll take it. I'll take it. It was a victory after all, so I'm pretty happy with that. Anyway, technically what I could do is I could capture every single one of these. I think I will probably do that considering I am at a town at the moment. Um, I was kind of in two minds about it because here's the thing. I'm not going to get a huge amount of roguery skill from this, I don't think. There's some really, really good... Oh, wait a minute. Hello there. Yeah, I have a lame Empire Charger at the moment, so it would probably be a good idea for me to replace that Empire Warhorse. Let's go for that or something. That seems pretty fun. And then we'll just donate the rest, because that's going to be a huge, huge amount of experience, as we could no doubt see there. So that's going to be so, so fun. Anyway, um, yeah, I should probably sell those prisoners. I didn't really know whether to do it, because the roguery skill that we're going to get from it is probably going to be quite low. But let's see whether that is actually the case. Maybe we're going to be pleasantly surprised, you know? That's, that's always a possibility. So let's have a look. Yeah, look at that. 29,000. That's it? Are you serious? Just 29,000? That's absolutely pitiful, to be honest. All right. Well, it's mostly because of the fact that there are basically no high tier troops here at all. That's the reason why we were probably able to defeat these guys so incredibly simply and i'm gonna just be getting rid of some of these fellows uh get rid of these and there we have it okay that is all i wanted to do and yeah we we did gain three skill points in roguery so i suppose it isn't all bad but i would definitely say that it is not you know maybe i don't know is it worth the effort is it worth the micromanagement maybe it is maybe it is oh well anyway i'm actually just gonna wait here for some time i think that they are yeah they were actually besieging this but i decided to leave it alone because i thought hey you know what maybe the ai is going to do something maybe they're going to try to defend it and i'm talking about our friendly ai of course but lo and behold because they are just so incredibly useful and thank you very much for you know helping us because they they obviously didn't they didn't help us at all the only AI that I've ever seen actually be really, really good is, well, okay, I'm not going to be too harsh about it, all right? I'm not going to be too harsh about it. There are moments where the AI in general will be supportive. Um, however, on the whole, they are very lackluster when it comes to reactionary things, so they will generally take a very long time to go to pretty much any situation and assist. Um, so that's a, that's a shame. However, um, I'm talking about Mengus, okay? I'm talking about Mengus. Now, if you don't know who Mengus is, I'd highly recommend uh, watching the Europe 1100 series. Europe 1100 is where um, it's very historical, so you're set in, well, what is it, 16th, 17th century? I, I actually don't even know what the year is, but... It is, yeah, I think 16th, is it, isn't it 16th century Europe? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I, for, I forgot, I, you know, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> but the point is, it's a historical map of Europe, very accurate, and you're going to be able to utilize, you know, um, historically accurate troops and so on and so forth. And I had a whale of a time with it, and we eventually got to a point where I recruited this guy. His name was Mengus the... Uh, belly, Iron Belly, uh, Mengus Iron Belly, I think. Yeah, 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 there we go. Mengus Iron Belly, I think, was his name. And he literally just destroyed everything. He was literally the reason why we were capturing everything. He was, um, he was leading armies. Uh, he was just doing the utmost to make sure that we succeeded in whatever we were whatever we were attempting to do and that is literally the the one he was a, he was a companion as well by the way and i made him into a vassal and um yeah so i'd highly recommend checking that out if you're interested it is so uh it, it was a fun fun series really really fun series um because there was a lot of different ways that you know we could progress in that one and um just seeing mangus go absolutely crazy was 
um, hilarious in itself because I was just blown away, absolutely blown away every single time he would go into a battle or we would go at, you know, go into war against someone. And all of a sudden you just go, oh, Mengus has just taken that thief and then he's just taken that thief and so on and so forth. And he's just so, so good. Obviously he can't do it all. He does need some assistance. And that's the reason why um, in the end I did manage to recruit a couple more vassals. But yeah, it was, um, Mengus was basically carrying us to victory there most of the time. Anyway, that is going to be it for this episode. We are now at war against Tala, Tala Beckland, but hopefully we are going to be able to make peace with them relatively soon because I'm not sure whether it really makes sense for us to do battle with them. I'd like to actually do some more damage to the Sylvanians because we haven't fought them yet. I think that could be a lot of fun. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.